everybody. Welcome back to Total Agent Access. I'm Colin Brenner, and this is a really, really amazing. I'm very, very excited because today we have with us Sheila Fejeron, and she's in South Carolina right now, and I'm way up here in Prince George, British Columbia, and we're able to talk and record a podcast. Welcome to the show, Sheila. Thank you so much. Appreciate being here. Excellent. And now I have heard you speak twice this year. And let me tell you, every time I go away from one of your talks, I feel really, really uplifted and inspired. And I hope that comes through and I can share it with everybody that listens to this podcast. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Well, originally I'm from Kentucky. I'm a farm girl, um, born and raised, and then um, I was one of those farm girls that wanted the big city lights and all of that stuff, so I got into the media business. I worked for radio stations okay. in Ohio, Philadelphia, New York City, and then was recruited by a pharmaceutical company as a startup, and I love a challenge, so I went and did that, wound up becoming one of the owners, and, uh, stockholders, and... Um, we built that up. They moved me to Texas. That's how I wound up in Texas. Gotcha. And um, we got bought out. So that's when I got into real estate. And it, after that, yep. So cashed out. And now it's like, now what? <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit of a necessity. You're like, okay, I had this plan and now it's gone away. What drew you to getting into real estate? Well, the funny thing is, I don't know how I didn't do that to begin with, because when I was a little girl, I would draw houses. I, I would sit in my elementary school and draw a floor plan. So I don't know how I didn't become an architect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really funny of, um, you know, where we were and how we got here. Um, a lot of people that know me know my story, but I am a chef by trade. Huh? I wow. know. That's a little bit different than real estate. <laughs> it's just, just a little bit different. And, and people are always like, well, how, why, how does that, <laughs> you are polar opposites, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so what was it that drew you to becoming a real estate agent? What, what did you find about it that uh, interests you enough to get into it? Well, what I actually started doing first is working for builders because of, I love, drawing and construction and design. I uh, wound up working for a big national builder and uh, drawing homes and building them for people. So I would design homes <coughs> and people would come in and I would cut and paste the blueprints from the builder yep. to, to scale. I would create a floor plan. And once it was exactly what my clients wanted, I would then hand it to my CAD operator to load and put the frame and all that stuff on it. So there's a lot of Sheila houses out in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You should coin that phrase, Sheila house. <laughs> and how was it from that point on, because you're quite a successful real estate agent, how did you build it up? What were some of the habits that you possessed and you used that helped you excel in the business? Uh, I think one of the number one things in our industry is persistence. And I mean, growing up on a farm and working hard, I learned, I learned how to be slow and steady and consistent. And a lot of people in our business want fast money, fast closings. They want things easy and they're not necessarily willing to do the hard work. So I'm, I'm willing to do the hard work. When I decided to move on to the agency side was because my boys were at the end of elementary school, getting into middle school and, and they were like, mommy, we would, if we could have anything we wanted, we would like you to be home when we get home from school. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because right. in the building business, we worked until seven every night and every Saturday yeah. and sometimes Sunday. So um, I said, okay, I'm going to switch. And I moved over to the agency side just so that I could make sure I was home for my boys every day. Right. And even now, they're grown and in college. And, and I, they always said to me, even throughout high school, they said there was something – that he, they said, even if you were on the phone, if we could walk by your office and see you, it was comforting to us. Right. So for whatever reason, the kids really liked just having me there, even if I was hammering out a bunch of phone calls. Right. So. 
It's normal. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we ran into some technical difficulties. Everybody. We've ironed them out. The high surprise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the distance between us, right? <laughs> so you're at the agency. The boys are in elementary school. Um, how now what I understand is that you grew that business to where you were managing three different offices. Well, actually I had 12 offices 12 in four offices. states. In four states. Holy. Yeah. So what had happened was when I started in the business, I, I did what everybody did. You know, it either comes down to time or money. What are you going to spend time or money? Well, I didn't have the money at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I had to spend the time. So I started door knocking. I started doing open houses and I started calling expires. That's how I started. Right. And so I wound up taking an 800 person neighborhood and just dominating it. And I used to, my boys and I talk about child labor. We used to deliver flyers every week, every week, year round. Wow. 800 flyers a week. And it was open houses, just listed, just sold, new, coming soon, you name it. And, and so we got, we became a household name and just my business just skyrocketed. Right. So, and would you suggest that to an agent nowadays? Yeah. I mean, the truth is the good old stuff still works. You, you have to be careful. So when you're, when you're farming, you know, statistically, you always want to look at a neighborhood that has at least, you know, the closer you can get to a 10% turnover, the better, because if, if the neighborhood isn't turning over, it's not worth going after. I mean, a lot of times people will look for an average of, you know, 7% or something like that, but if you can get closer to 10, you're better off. Um, you also want to see who, if somebody dominates the neighborhood. If an agent's been there for 15 years, it can go one of two ways. So what had happened was the neighborhood I went after, somebody was there, but nobody liked her because she thought she was the thing and was really cocky with people and people didn't appreciate it. So okay. I wound up dominating over somebody who'd owned the neighborhood for like 15 years just because of being in the business, I earned the business. Right. And so don't necessarily, depending on who the person is and how locked in they are, determines whether or not you go after it. I, I recommend going after one that doesn't have someone. Yeah. <laughs> if you can, um, you want at least 500 homes. Okay. But if you can do 1,000 homes, that's even better because the more market penetration you can have, the better it is for you building the business. But it is, it is hard work if you're doing it yourself and literally – it would take us six hours between the four of us to uh, flyer a neighborhood. Wow, that's some hard work. It was hard work. <laughs> Lucky. But Go ahead. It worked. It worked. Yeah. And then, then what happened was at, at one point, it, the pendulum swings. And the, then you don't have as much time, but you have a lot of money, which is where I wound up. So then you start having to decide, okay, what am I going to do? And then I started moving into more buying leads so that I didn't have to do the farming the way I was doing it. Great. And, yeah. um, and then I hired buyers agents and they started taking over all the open houses and I started doing leverage. It's all about leverage. It's leveraging your time. Well, wow, that's some really good advice. I was going to say you're lucky down there that you don't have winters like ours because walking around up here uh, delivering flyers in winter is <laughs> would would be a real treat. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be doing that up there in the middle of winter. But <laughs> <laughs> you're more than welcome to come and visit. I think I would find something else to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you have you you've grown this huge business now. You have twelve offices that you're managing in all different states. And how were you introduced to XP? Well, I actually was uh, updating my broker's license and sitting in a class of brokers. It was a broker, um, broker. I can't remember the name of the class. It was a broker review class, basically. And a gentleman walks in and sponsors lunch. And as he starts going through the presentation about EXP, I, I literally was on the edge of my seat because from the second he started showing the information, I got it. And I, the first thought that popped in my head was 50 states. <laughs> because <laughs> in my mind, running what I ran, 
we did a lot of foreclosures, a lot of HUD, a lot of REO, and um, the market was really changing back then. And you had a lot of companies bundling in the billions to the hedge funds and stuff like that. So I saw the short stick with that business and realized that at some point they're going to move it, move the properties different ways. Yeah. And that if you don't change and shift, then you're going to be out of business. So I also thought if we could have people or even in the four states that we had, I thought, well, if I had people in all 50 states on my team, what you noticed in the, in the last downturn is some states were doing bad and some states weren't. So I figured in my head that, hey, if California is doing bad, Texas will be doing good. Or if New York's doing good, Florida won't be. And then if I, I had a balance, if I had people everywhere, that's really what was in my head when I made the decision to move. Right. And when you saw it, did you have a hard time sleeping that night? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I was out of my chair as soon as he said thank you and in front of him saying, when can we set up an appointment? Really? Because I, I knew that this this was going to change them. It's not the thing that I, I think a lot of people think is that EXP is another real estate company, right. but we're not another real estate company. We are actually a brand new model in the real estate space. No different than Netflix was a new model in the movie space and put Blockbuster out of business. So it's a completely new model, which is why it's so important for people to look at it and understand it because it's not something that's ever been done before in exactly this way. And yes, they took pieces from a lot of good companies to come up with the ideas of how to structure it, but it is an absolutely new model. And how do you communicate that to somebody that, uh, you know, is at the, what I call the big box brand brokerage? How do you communicate? How do you show them the difference? Well, I actually talk them through how a normal model is because if you look at the history of real estate think about from the time real estate came in an invention in 1960s the century 21 you have the international company then you have the um the regional. You have regional owners then you have the franchise owners then you have the managers then you have the agents and so when you look at it from a structural perspective the old model or the normal franchise model is set up as a corporation. It's set up no different than corporate America <laughs> where you've got the president and the big bosses and then the little guy down at the bottom. And so in, when, when you look at it, the, uh, when you look up the definition of franchise, it means limited partnership. <laughs> Well, guess what? That's exactly what it is. <laughs> it's a limited partnership for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Where when you look at this new model and help people understand that you're getting rid of all of the extra layers, all the extra management, all of the extra fees, all of the extra stuff, and then you're focused on the people who are doing all the work, bringing in all the money, making everything happen, procuring the business, who is the Everything becomes about how does this impact the agent or how is this better for the agent the light bulbs go on and everything shifts it's a complete shift because that's kind of like what Netflix did Netflix was like you know what's gonna what's the easiest way for us to deliver movies to people what the consumer was their target so they were very consumer centric you know what do we how do we deliver it how do we make it easy how do we make it smooth how do we make sure they can watch the movie there's no glitches how do we make it seamless and when you looked at you look at how they created everything that was consumer centric that's why it was so powerful because you think about you think about today and did you guys have blockbusters up there we sure did okay so would you if, if blockbuster came out today in your town would you go no. would you would you get in your car? Would you drive there? Would you drive around the parking lot trying to find a place to spark? Would you go in? It's all crowded, walking up and down the aisles trying to even find a movie you're interested in, opening the box to see if the movie's even there. And then if you get one, you take it home, stick it in the thing, stick it in the player, stick the CD in, and see if it even works, see if it skips. Yeah. Nobody in their right mind would go back to a Blockbuster if it opened today. Yeah. 
this is no different. Once people understand the concept and the new model, it wouldn't make sense to go back. Right. How has EXP impacted your life personally? It, my life is literally completely different than it was three years ago. Um, everything from my financial perspective, um, I have, I've personally invited 40 plus people into the company and I have over 5,000 people on my team all over the country in America and in Canada. And so when you think about the exponential power of the financials that come from earning money from 5,000 people versus 40, yeah. <laughs> that's a very big difference. Um, I've been able to set up a nonprofit. I've been able to give money to single moms, college students, uh, and just help a lot of people. Um, I actually just secured a place last week in Puerto Rico. I'm moving to Puerto Rico. So I'm going to have a house in Puerto Rico and a house in Dallas. Um, it just financially completely changed the landscape of, of my life, really. Wow, that's amazing. We talk a lot about uh, EXP changing lives. And, you know, a couple podcasts ago, um, we talked about, you know, asking yourself as an agent, what has my brokerage done for me and how has it changed my life. And I don't think a lot of people ask themselves that question, you know, about how, what it's doing for you. I think sometimes agents ask, what is my broker doing for me? Or I think the even bigger thing agents think about is this is my friend. I've worked at this broker for 10 years. He's my buddy. We go on vacation together. We get along really good. Our wives are friends. And so they're emotionally connected to their broker because they have a relationship with them. They're not looking at it from a pure business perspective of what is the broker providing me for the money I'm paying or, or how is my life actually being changed because of it? Because EXP isn't just about, um, it isn't just about the splits. It's so much bigger than that. It's so, what it's doing is so much greater than just giving you a better split or even better opportunities. It's changing your lives in lots of ways because when you think about, I think about the culture, um, you know, there are coaching companies that you join and you become friends with people across the country when you're coaching with them and you have com camaraderie and honesty and um, you share everything with each other because there's no, um, no worry about whether or not that person's competition with you or whether or not you have to, you know, be in the same market with that person. And, and most brokerages in the actual brokerage itself, you don't have that. People are very tight to the chest with how to do things and how to make things work. But EXP is different because we're all owners. If, if I can help you be more successful, then I'm more successful because our stock goes up. We all win because we actually become partners with each other instead of just classmates, if you want to call it that, working in the same brokerage, we actually are partnering with each other to help each other be successful. And, and if I help you be successful and then we help your friends be successful and we help their friends be successful, then we all win together. So it's a very, it's much more of a team mindset yep. globally. They, and, and you even think on a normal team structure of a, an agent team and, you know, the team leader always works, you know, if, if you want a mega team, you're trying to get your team members to get along, but there's always this sense of competition because who got more leads? Did they sell more than me? I need to win, whatever, whatever. But again, with the XP, it's different because of being partners, not just team members. We are helping each other build each other's businesses, which is pretty brilliant, to be honest with you. Yeah, that is for me, and I've said it a hundred times, the biggest thing that I saw, or I didn't see it before, but now that I'm in it, is the amount of collaboration that goes on with the EXP because we have eliminated the competition between agents. Yeah, I don't, I don't think people talk enough about that because I think that's one of the most powerful things that we offer. I think the other powerful thing we offer from the platform perspective 
is um, once you log in, you literally have every single thing at your fingertips to operate your business at the highest level possible, all included from the company, which is pretty amazing when you, most people don't, I know most people in the company don't even use all the stuff the company gives us. <laughs> they, they give us so much technology and so many systems and so much support. I mean, it's, it's almost like a fire hose opening up at you when you come here. People are a little overwhelmed at, because they just, they're kind of shocked. Like, wow, I can't believe they give us all of this. But once you start using it and in, in, uh, indoctrinating yourself into the culture and learning the systems, it's really mind blowing how how much the company gives back to us. Yeah, when I was first introduced, I, I looked at it and I was kind of skeptic at first and then I looked at it a little bit more and I started asking myself, I was like, okay, this seems too perfect. It seems like it is the most perfect thing for a real estate agent. Were you skeptical at first? No. You saw it? And yeah, because I was run, I was running a virtual brokerage, so yeah. I I could not travel enough to all the offices that I had. So I was already running everything virtually. I was doing all of my training virtually. I had drop boxes set up. I had training systems set up. I had all of it already running. So I got it straight out of the gate because I was already doing it. Right. This right. was much bigger and much more powerful than what I was doing. <laughs> On a much larger scale. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's very interesting. So you had already kind of been working your business this way, anyways, and then all of a sudden you saw a version of that on steroids. Yeah, I mean, for five years, um, I had at the beginning I was trying to do it, driving around, flying places, all that stuff, and I'm like, I'm killing myself. I cannot make it to every place. I, I just can't do it all. I was one person. I was the managing broker and the VP. So I was running all the contracts and I was running all the agents. I was running all the training. I was doing all the hiring. I was doing everything. And so I realized that if I did it virtually, I could work from the house. For, and I was actually working from my home and I was running the whole company from my phone and from uh, everything in the cloud. And it was a no brainer for you. It was a no brainer for me. Yeah. What would you say to somebody right now that's looking at EXP and is unsure? I guess it depends on who they are. It depends on their why. It depends on what they need. Because if, if they really understood the model, if they really took the time to understand every aspect of what's being offered, the company, Glenn was so careful when he set this up to really hit every major important thing for every agent. So whether it's if training's your hot button, if leads are your hot button, if systems are your hot button, marketing's your hot button, stock ownership is your hot button, revs your hot it doesn't matter what your hot button is, Glenn created it to be a part of the company. So I don't understand. I have to assume if somebody is hesitating, that means they really don't understand the model. Right. Now I'm not saying if somebody is like brand new out of real estate school has never sold a home and has like is so broke, they can't even afford the monthly dues at any brokerage, not just ours, they're probably the only person that might want to consider not coming here at right. first because if they're so broke, they can't afford a monthly due anywhere. That would probably be the only person that shouldn't come here until they get a little more stable and can, you know, get a little money. Right. Other than that, I have not figured out even from a broker level, it doesn't make sense to keep a brokerage once you see this. Yeah. That's why it, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense as a mega team. I've been a broker. I've been a mega team. I've been a solo agent. I've been every level that there is in, in our business. And there isn't anything that isn't already laid out to take care of you and to 
be better for you here. Yeah. Yeah. When, when you made the move over to ESP now, I'm talking kind of from a Canadian perspective because across our country, we are just over 500 agents right now as we're recording this podcast. So the EXP brand is not a huge brand yet. Did you have any concerns when you brought over listings and all your people of, you know, your clients going, what is this? I think I need to have a national brand. No, because the truth is, and you know this, and I know this working in the industry, the brand doesn't, is not what sells that house. I sell that house. I pay for the marketing. I'm the one that's aggressive. I'm the one door knocking. I'm the one inviting people. I'm the one paying for all the systems. It's, it's not about what you invest in your business to help be successful for your clients. And people who are in this side of the business understand that. The public doesn't understand that it doesn't matter if you have a balloon or a red symbol on your sign. That, that means nothing. What means something is who, who's that agent in the seat right. and what are, what are they going to do for me? How aggressive are they? What are their systems like? How many homes have they sold? How much experience do they have? What are they like negotiating? What are they like communicating? So it's really all about who I am as an agent. So I wasn't, that didn't bother me at all. What tools that EXP provides you have you used to leverage your business? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Which one would you say is the biggest one? Hmm. Do you use KB Core? Mm -hmm. KB Core is rocking. I mean, if you set it up the right way and do the work, but I have people that do all that stuff for me, so I don't have to do it. Um, <laughs> um, I really, I think all of it. I mean, there, there isn't anything that they don't offer that isn't useful. I, there, there's no system that I would say is a waste of time to invest in and to learn how to use. Because if you're planning on doing the business and growing a business, having a team, or wh whatever level you want to get to, you, at some point you're going to use all of the technology because you're going to need it. Whether it's for that listing or for that buyer or for that whatever, you're eventually going to need it. Right. Awesome. That's a really great jump off point. I so appreciate you being on the podcast, Sheila. How, if, if somebody's looking at eXp and they want to talk to you, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, they can Facebook message me or they can um, call my office. And my office number is 972-948-0715. Terrific. And text, call, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Do it all and you will answer. Absolutely. Thank you very much for coming on and sharing your wisdom. We all greatly appreciate it and I wish you all the best. Thank you. See you soon. Yes, you will. You'll see me in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Bye. Oh, bye, Sheila.